In this grade 12 maths literacy video, we are looking at the paper 2 exam scope. We have already covered our paper 1 and more than likely by the time you see this video, you would have already written your paper 1. So this one is to prepare you for your upcoming paper 2. So this is going to highlight all the topics that are going to be in your paper 2 question paper, but not only highlight those topics, but also state what are the subtopics under them you would need to study for you to be prepared for your paper too but before we get into it I just wanted to remind you that we have the cheat sheets the cheat sheets as I always say they serve as a more in-depth scope for what's coming in both of these papers so by the time you finish writing your paper one and you want to jump immediately into your paper two you would already have your paper two cheat sheets already ready for you all you have to do to buy one is simply email me at priscilla.sanelani at gmail the first topic in your paper two question paper is going to be the topic of maps and plans you will find the basics of this in your question one that we also know to be most of the basic 20% level one questions so you will find the basics of maps and plans in your question one but the more in-depth question you will find it in your question two so what do you need to study under this topic for you to be able to say that you are ready for the topic of maps and plans well the first thing is your scales you need to be comfortable with the portion of scales that goes into maps and plans scales cover both the maps portion as well as the plans portion so you need to be able to deal with your scales with your ratio scales as well as your bar scale now a ratio scale is usually easier for a lot of learners to deal with what you need to practice is your bar scale and with your bar scales you also need to know that you need a functioning ruler with you in the exam room because the bar scale requires you to actually measure what is on paper and be able to use it in terms of the measurements that you have taken accurately then you also have to be able to use those same scales to determine the, the actual length of uh, things so for example they could give you the length on paper what you need to calculate is be able to calculate the actual length in real life and then you also have some questions where they will give you the length in real life and the length in paper and they want you to use that information to determine the scale so you need to be able to determine the scale is usually going to be a ratio scale that you will come up with then we get to the portion of maps with the portion of maps you need to be able to be good with your map reading meaning that you need to be able to identify things on your map you need to be able to read the map and also be able to give directions when giving directions you also know that you need to use the compass direction that is the north the east the south and the west you're not saying go left you're saying go east and then 10 you know so that's what we mean by saying giving uh, directions in terms of the map you're not saying go up and go down you're going to say go north and go south and then you also be able to have to read the grid maps so meaning that do you see that what lies in a1 and what is in b2 that's what we mean by grid maps and then we get to the portion of plans with a portion of plans this is where we're looking at things like house plans as well as the elevation plans with that include the terminology like defining south elevation and north elevation and then you will end your studying with packaging which holds the most amount of marks so make sure that you are comfortable with doing a packaging question <music> The second topic is measurement again you will find the basics of it in your question one but you will find the bulk of it in question three and then it will also be integrated in your question four and five so what we are looking at with measurement is the first thing that you need to be comfortable with when you're studying is be able to convert easily from your imperial to metric systems so we know that with imperial systems the units that we're using like your miles as well as your inches and be able to convert those two things like kilometers and meters and centimeters in the metric system and then also be able to do basic unit conversions meaning how do i move from a centimeter to a meter to a kilometer how do i move from a gram to a kilogram those that's what we mean by unit conversions these are the things that you will not be provided 
in the question paper meaning that there is no formula sheet on how to move from centimeter to meter you need to be able to know these by heart so make sure that you know your unit conversions by heart then get to measuring time that is in the Fahrenheit as well as the Celsius degrees and then also be able to measure distance. This is where we're using distance units such as the centimeters and the millimeters and then get into the weight that is the mass. This is where we're looking at the kilograms, the grams and so forth and then and everything with uh, the measurement of volume this is where we're looking at liters kiloliters and so forth with weight uh, we also have bmi chart that is the body mass index charts so make sure that you are comfortable with your body mass uh, index charts and be able to read them and answer questions on the bmi charts a lot of students have challenges with those then you will end everything with the calculation of perimeter area total surface area and volume <music> The last topic that you have in your paper 2 scope is probabilities and just like in your paper 1 this is going to be an integrated question. So what we mean is it's going to be integrated with maps and plans in your question 4 and be integrated with your measurement in your question 5. So what you can expect with a probability question in particular and what you should be comfortable with before walking into the exam room is the formula for calculating a probability. Most of the learners are not even aware that there is a formula that we use to calculate a probability that is favorable outcomes over all possible outcomes you need to be able to work with the substitution of those variables in that formula. Be able to calculate the probability of an event taking place that is an event happening. Be able to calculate the probability of an event not taking place meaning that the event is not happening so what would be the probability of that and then you also have to be able to calculate the probability of two events or rather determine the probability of two events taking place whether they are similar events or non-similar events this is what we call compound events so can you calculate the probability of two events taking place and then also end with the tree diagrams and filling in that tree diagram I have youtube recommend you more of my videos be sure to click the like button and subscribe to the channel and if you have any questions leave them in the comment section below